What's going on, everyone? So, we saw the Lakers have a nice collective effort, nice collective win, right? So, Anthony Davis gave you a nice stat line, filled out the stats, but he gave you seven assists, right? And I've talked about this, like, he had, what, 19, 14, and seven, right? Like, I would rather that from Anthony Davis, a little more scoring, like, you know, maybe like 25, right? But, like, if he could give me, like, 25, 12, and five, perfect stat line. Right, because he just he's so much more impactful. He's passing out of the post. He's getting guys involved. Right, like it's just it's a beautiful game when he has those stat lines. The Lakers like just don't lose those games, right? Because you, you don't know you can't guard him, right? Like because he's just he's hitting everything. And then if you try to double or anything, like, he's just passing out of it like it's nothing. He's setting guys up, knocking down the shooters. You saw this, this was a great kind of team. Universal win, right? Everybody chipped in. D'Lo finally woke up. Austin Reeves had a good game. Dalton Connect led all scorers, right? Like LeBron had triple double, right? Like uh, Anthony Davis near triple double, right? Like everybody chipped in. Max Christie, this was in my opinion his best game, right? And it was like box score wise, if you just watched, if you just looked at the box score, you're like, ah, you know, he had a good game, right? If you watch that game, you're like, that was great, right? I mean, he had his hand in everything. Right? He, he was disrupting passing lanes. He was disrupting shots. He's getting after it, chasing down loose. I mean, the guy was just brilliant. Put on a clinic that game. That was by far his best game. He Maybe, period. Right? Like, just because of how impactful he was on both sides of the ball and, and making plays and being that swing man and stuff, right? A lot of stuff that just doesn't show up on the box score. But beautiful all-around thing. Problem is, is... How much of this is just an outlier? How much of this is actually the team? Like this, like this is what it is, right? Because I talk about it all the time. Every time the Lakers get 30 plus assists, they win every game. You don't beat them, right? Why? Because they're, they're too good. They have too much offensive power, too much offensive versatility. But the problem is, is consistency. It's something I've talked about. So much so that there has even been reports that have came out that there is a growing concern that the Lakers need a top tier guard, that they need an all-star level guard, right? I have a video diving into those details, but I want to talk about Zach Levine specifically in this video, because one, big Zach Levine guy, two, I think we really need Zach Levine, three, I am going to talk about Zach Levine every chance that I get, right? And Zach Levine, you saw, not so much in the Spurs game, right, because it was a collective game, but you would have more of those games because you have a guy in Zach Levine who is a threat, who is your third best guy, who does give you athleticism and rim pressure and can make plays and can drive and kick out and, and uh, collapse the offense or the defense, right? Like he's just so versatile on the offensive side of things, gives you that athleticism on the defensive side of things, right? He has this like reputation of being a bad defender, which I just don't get. Like, again, go look up the numbers, right? Like I just think, I just think somebody said he was a bad defender and then somebody else like you know, echoed that, and then he just got this reputation of being a bad defender. Every year, he's either league average or better. He would be our third best defensive player per rating right now if he was on the Lakers. That's how bad our guards are. That's how bad our wings are. That's how bad our defense is as a whole, right? He, so he gives you a higher level of offense, right, which Lakers are like fourth in offense, right? But guess what? You can always be better, right? You know, even if you're number one, there's still, you know, second team, you can always separate yourself even further. You can always be better on the offensive side, but you need better balance. Zach Levine gives you that balance, gives you that legit third guy, right? Lakers apparently see that they need an, a real all-star caliber guard. Problem is, there aren't any. There's Trey Young and Zach Levine. So, Trey Young, there's a lot of questions about his fit. And can he play in the style of offense that we run? He's used to having the ball in his hands the whole time, right? Like, can he play off ball and all that? Him and DeJounte Murray didn't work, right? So, okay, well, who's left? Oh, Zach Levine. Okay, so if you need that, then get Zach Levine. My thing is that, like, you look at the previous game, right, against the Suns. That was a prime example. And we've seen this against the top teams. We need desperately a guy like a Zach Levine. I think either A, you go and you get the net straight and you just fill every hole, right? You get, you know, Dennis Schroeder, Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, De'Ron Sharp, and you just full haul, boom, there you go. Or you have to get Zach Levine. 
because you can get Zach Levine and you can still get a Dorian Finney-Smith and you can still get a Dayron Sharp or a Walker Kessler or whatever. It's not just Zach Levine and that's it. A lot of people make it seem like, oh, but if we get Zach Levine, that's it. No, you get Zach Levine, you can get a 3 and D Wayne, and you can go get a backup center, right? Like Zach Levine doesn't mean that you can't get anything else, but what Zach Levine does is he takes a ton of pressure off your team, he raises the ceiling higher than anybody, and he allows you to still go make other moves because you get to keep all your picks, right? Like the Nets want two first just for Cam Johnson, right? Like Cam Johnson by himself doesn't make us a contender. He makes us better, but him by himself doesn't make us a contender. Right? Also, Austin Reeves is not a third guy. I like Austin Reeves. He is a great role player, but that's what he is, is a role player. He's too inconsistent. Even in the good games he's had, he's been half to half. He has like a great first half, terrible second half. So even, even through the course of a game, he can't be consistent. Right? D'Angelo Russell, completely non non-existent, right? Like, I mean, he had a great game against the Spurs. Credit that, you know, credit D'Lo, uh, credit Reeves, credit everybody, right? That was a game where everyone deserves some credit. Everyone did a great job. But game to game, right? Like D'Lo has been literally Zach Levine is giving more production than D'Lo, Rui, and Gabe Vincent combined. Gabe Vincent's just cardio. He has more, he is literally per 100 minutes the worst player in basketball. Literally, <laughs> the worst player in basketball. And he's a guy that regularly gives you goose eggs. Let, uh, just getting cardio. Cardio Gabe is the reputation he has at this point. So, you, okay, so you trade Gabe Vincent. Who cares? Take him here. Please, we just give him to you at this point. Right? So really what it is is D'Lo and Rui Hachimura versus Zach Levine. Zach Levine is more athletic than both of those guys combined. He gives you the same offensive versatility and then some than both of those guys combined. He's a as good of a three-point shooter as both of those guys combined. The guy's got defense. I mean, the guy is, he's better than both of those guys. And he's been better than both of those guys combined. So you get the production of all three of those guys. People are like, oh, what about depth? What about depth? Who cares about depth if they don't play? If they don't show up? Oh, so we, should, we, we have to keep Gabe Vincent because of depth. We have to have, man, Gabe Vincent has to play because I don't, no, the guy's giving you zeros. He's literally just showing up to, to just not get fined. Like, what are we talking about here? I don't care. Like, who cares about depth if the depth is irrelevant? Depth matters if they contribute. You know, depth matters if it helps and leads to winning. If it makes you worse, depth is irrelevant. Look at all the top teams. Denver, when they won the championship, they were only like six deep. Like, Christian Brown was a rookie that got spot minutes and was terrible and, like, didn't hit a three, like, in the playoffs, right? Like, you had Jeff Green, who was solid, but he only played, like, eight minutes a game. It was literally, like, it was their starting five plus Bruce Brown. Look at Boston. Boston just won the championship. Elite starting five. And then you have uh, Al Horford, right? You know, Pritchard and all these, like... Yeah, sure, they play spot minutes at times, but they're not playing, like, they're not looked at as, like, a top, like, one of the top in rotation guys, no. Right, like, if they left the team tomorrow, it wouldn't even affect the Celtics, right? Like, you know, again, you go down the list, look at these teams. They're winning because they just, they're so front-loaded, no one else can keep up. The, the, your front end is what matters the most, right? What is your starting five and six men? Depth is nice over the course of an 82-game season because you can kind of fill in the gaps. You can stay afloat if guys miss significant time, all of that, right? Like, that's the idea. But again, if depth doesn't help and it doesn't lead to winning, then who cares about the depth? And it's not like you can't have both. Again, you could literally go and trade for Zach Levine, Dorian Finney-Smith, and then like a Dayron Sharp. And then your, your top guys, right, would be LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Austin Reeves, Zach Levine, right? And then you have, go oh, Jerry, well, you'd probably trade Jared Vanderbilt for Dorian Finney Smith, but you could go like Cam Reddish if you wanted to, or you go Dalton Connect, right? Let's say, let's just go in order for like skill set wise, right? You got Dalton Connect, still have Max Christie, right? You need to get a backup center, Brandon, or a backup guard, Brandon Quincy Olivari. You have um, Christian Wood. You have. Uh, day Ron Sharp. I mean, you got how much depth do you need? You have nine guys, ten guys, right? Like you're fine. I, I just I don't see the issue here if you're the Lakers, right? Like Zach Levine makes a lot of sense. I think they need to get him sooner or later. I said originally that I wanted to see the Lakers be patient, right? Because you want it because he is a big investment, right? And you want to make sure that he can play 20, 30, 40 games, right? Like so, like let's see him twenty. 
25, 30 games in. That gets you to like January, you know, close to the trade deadline. Then you can make your decision to pull the trigger on a Zach Levine. I don't like, I don't trust the Lakers to consistently put together what they did against the Spurs. I don't. The Lakers have been good at beating the, the bad teams. They haven't been good at beating the good teams. Right? Like, in hindsight, you know, like, in the moment, it was like, oh, man, we just beat Minnesota and stuff. Like, right? And it's just like, oh, man, these are really good teams. In hindsight, now looking back, it was like, oh, no, they were trash. Right? Like, the Lakers are just beating all the bad teams. Like, they were a bad team. Right? So, Lakers are beating all the bad teams. They're losing all the good teams. Because they don't have that consistent guy. LeBron James and Anthony Davis have to go give you 60 a night for you to have a chance. Unless you have a game like what we just saw where everybody's contributing. You know, everyone's chipping in and giving a piece. I just think you need to go get Zach Levine sooner rather than later. I just, I don't think you should wait anymore. Right? Stay diligent on the Nets. I'm not saying you have to do it like today. But stay diligent on the Nets. Work it out. Right? Lakers have been active in trying to get Dorian Finney-Smith. So, based on the reports, you have... Lakers need feel the need to get an uh, to get an all star level guard. Okay, check. Well, you need with Zach Levine. Check, right? Okay, well, you need more than just Zach Levine. You need a three and D wing. Oh, Lakers have been active in Dorian Finney Smith. The reports aren't that they're active at Dorian Finney Smith, Cam Johnson, Dayron Sharp. Like, no, it's just Dorian Finney Smith. Okay, and then you need a backup center. I mean, technically, you could get Valanciunas, Smith, uh, Smith, and Levine if you wanted to, right? Like, my hope is that the Lakers. That that's what happens, right? They are diligent with the Nets, kind of figure out, okay, what what do we need? What can we what can we realistically get from you guys? And then from there, try to figure out, like, okay, like, okay, we can get just Dorian Finney Smith. Okay, let's go get Zach Levine. Right? Because if you can get the huge haul, right? If you can get the trade for like everybody, then I think that that's probably your best trade overall. Right? If you could get Dennis Schroeder, Dorian Finney Smith, Cam Johnson, Dayron Trap. Like, if you can do something like that, then I just think that that's better than, like, Zach Levine, Dorian Finney-Smith. And although you could argue it's not, but if I mean, I just think you, you, now you have depth. You've solved all your holes. You basically fix everything. But, anyway, as always, this is a discussion. And I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think that, like, yes, go get Zach Levine sooner or later? Do you think, no, be patient, wait it out? Uh, again, however you feel, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me not, so we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.